Established in 1977, Leonetti Cellar is the oldest winery in Walla Walla. Founded by Gary Figgins and named after his grandparents, Leonetti Cellar is now under the care of his children. We spoke with Chris Figgins, president and winemaking director, who gave us a look into this family enterprise. So, your grandparents, talk to me about them, where they came from, and why yeah. they decided to come over to Walla Walla. Uh, so it was actually my, my great-grandparents was the Leonetti side, and they, they came from Calabria, Italy, which is the, the toe of the boot, and a little town called Serapodaci, and they came to Walla Walla like a ton of other Italians did uh, around the turn of the century. They came in 1902, and it's just promised for a you know better life, economic opportunity, and and uh, so they came out and they were truck farmers on the south end of town. They raised everything, you know, corn, onions, um, you know, all kinds of animals, and and uh, a big family, of course, being Italian Catholics and. And uh, so my grandma Leonetti married my grandpa Figgins, that's the uh, Leonetti Figgins connection. Okay. And, the, and then when my dad started the winery, my mom and dad in the 70s, uh, my dad decided to name it after the Leonetti side because that's where he was always exposed to the home wine making and, and uh, they had a small vineyard but never, never made wine commercially. And he named it after the Leonetti side and, and then so when I started that Figgins project, I decided to name it after the other side. They were the first winery here in Walla Walla. Mm -hmm. what, what got them? Well, uh, so dad was in the, in the late 60s and, and 70s, um, dad was in the Army Reserves with Rick Small at Woodward Canyon Winery and they were stationed down at Fort Ord, California and the two of them would, on their you know, weekend warrior trips, they'd, they'd take side trips into wine country and they, they both just got bit very hard by the winemaking bug and started home winemaking and, uh, you know, together at first and then uh, kind of doing their separate efforts and, uh, you know, comparing them together. It's like my first wine memory as a kid is dad and Rick tasting wine together and playing guitars. And then um, dad, uh, my folks released their first wine in 78, uh, bonded in 77, first uh, Cabernet in 78. And uh, he was a machinist. So he, he my dad took this uh, eye for detail that a machinist has, as was my grandpa Figgins and applied it to wine. And he's a really the first guy to, to take you know, Washington red wines and do it at a really high detailed level and it's kind of the, the spirit under which we work still today. What are some of your memories um, growing up in the vineyard? Uh, gosh, uh, just you know doing just about everything. I mean it seemed like um, I thought everyone's dad made wine, you know. <laughs> it was just ever ever present and you know crushing after work after he got home, you know, working a 10-hour machinist shift to come home and you know mom's uh, scraping out bins on top and dad working the crusher and uh, it was just you know it's kind of ever present in our lives was winemaking uh, save up it's vacation for October to uh, you know for yeah. crush and um, just always in the vineyards always going out to my uh, my great uncle's uh, Leonetti place to tin vines and right on the track with my dad and I just thought it was the greatest thing so I've I've never known a life without wine in it in one form or another so how many employees do you have at Leonetti and combine that with the Figgins winery. Figgins yeah, winery. Um, in total we're about 30 employees with our, you know, our vineyard crew, all our admin and production in the in the wineries. So um, that's, uh, you know, it was my parents' first full-time employee. So pr pretty proud of that, that, um, you know, take care of 30 families and, and uh, they take great care of us. And and um, it's just, it, it's really fun now. You go downtown to a restaurant and you know, like everyone and like so many people are involved in the wine industry, whether yeah. from a from a hose dragger to an owner to everything, and uh, it's really gratifying. What do you see for the the future of Leonetti and Figgins? Gosh, I think um, you know we're just going to continue to push the quality envelope of what what we do, and and um, you know stay focused on that in terms of you know, w what happens with the the wine industry and Walla Walla in general. I see nothing but continued growth. Um, and the good reason, you know, for that is our, our market's not just for, you know, local taste and traffic. It's it's national and even more and more international all the time. So I think you're going to continue to see the wine industry grow here and associated hospitality, restaurants, you know, hotels, etc. Um, and then all the ancillary stuff that goes with it. So, but for us, for now, we're staying focused on what we do qualitatively and. And uh, I'll be growing my, my organ, my toil organ, uh, Pinot Noir brand, and, 
and um, keeping things um, you know, unchanged here from a size perspective, but just continuing to focus on quality. in the Figgins uh, Vineyard, and I'm with obviously Chris Figgins. What, so the, explain to me the difference, Leonetti and Figgins. Are sure. they? Yeah, so um, I'm the winemaker at both. My family okay. owns both. Uh, my parents started Leonetti in the late 1970s, and um, Figgins is a single vineyard project. So Leonetti, we make varietal wines from um, uh, several different uh, vineyards throughout the valley. Of course, Figgins is just this single vineyard. I found my dream site, and uh, which we're standing in here, and uh, planted it to Cabernet Merlot Petit Verdot, and it just goes into a, uh, a single vineyard wine, uh, simply labeled Figgins. It's that old world model where the, the, the vineyard, the winery, the wine is just is, is one, uh, one congruent thing. And so I uh, just do a single red wine a year uh, in a state bottling that's a non varietal blend. Um, separate facility, separate assistant winemaker, but we do all our uh, admin and marketing and, uh, and farming as a team. What's an average day up here look like uh, when you're when you're in harvest? How early do you start? Oh gosh, uh, at daybreak. Uh, generally, you know, crew gets started picking uh, like we are today at daybreak, and you know we're usually done picking by 10 or 11, depending upon the block. Uh, get it done early while it's cool. Then the rest of the day we spend processing, uh, um, sorting, and crushing on the crush pad. Now you guys do everything by hand up here. We do, yeah. Everything's hand-picked and um, hand-sorted, and we make about 20 hand passes a year, so it's it's a lot. How many workers, on average, do you have up in the vineyard working? Uh, we've got uh, the crew you see here is our full-time vineyard crew. We got about 14 guys, and uh, and that's it. We don't hire extra guys for harvest. It's um, the same guys who do the same work all all year long, so they're they're intimate with every one of these vines and. Um, it's kind of their uh, end of year reward to get a to get a harvest them. How has the, the weather this year affected uh, the grapes? Oh, it's been an awesome year. We had uh, you know super early start, early April, early May, but then uh, we've had just a pretty mild summer and uh, just this long extended uh, August September hang time window. So um, early quality that we're seeing is just phenomenal. And I see a lot of lavender here. How is this? Uh, is this a, obviously a positive impact? Sure. For the vineyard? Yeah, it's just kind of one of my uh, trademarks. Started doing it years ago. Um, cause it attracts a lot of beneficial insects. That's the primary reason. But it also super low. Uh, it just doesn't take a lot of care. Um, it's it's uh, you know, it's basically a desert plant, and uh, and it's beautiful, and it smells great, and uh, just hosts a ton of beneficials. Okay. Anything uh, else that you would like to add? I'm oh, just uh, really excited about what's happening in Walla Walla. It's been a um, you know neat journey for my family, almost 40 years now, and just see like you know this summer alone four new restaurants opening and a lot of tourists coming to see how wines change this valley has been been mm -hmm. pretty phenomenal and and uh, it's been a fun ride. Okay, so we're standing next to the Riesling vines, which you said are they look ready to be picked. Exactly, and they taste ready to be picked. They're getting really close. So we watch the acid pretty carefully on Riesling, but uh, we'll be picking these first part of next week. And you were talking to me about the pairing and, and all that. Just explain to me what you just said to us. Oh, about, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so pick, oh, go ahead, pick one. And oh, okay. So see like, mm, the darker ones, mm -hmm. the uh, brown ones been in the sun a little more. I just that awesome, uh, awesome flavors, you know, tropical flavors we start to get, and that's what makes uh, makes Riesling so interesting on the nose, and and uh, some of the more interior stuff with the canopy gives that great acid. That you mind if I Riesling. try one? Absolutely. Which one would be perfect to pick? Not that one right there. <laughs> Actually, this perfect, one here? great. Yep. No, it is really good. Yeah, they taste great. Normally is what people call the VSP mm -hmm. for the positioning of the vines. You guys do something a little bit different. Uh, we do, and this particular block, which is, is Cabernet, this is uh, called a Lyrae system, and it's pretty unique as trellising goes. Uh, like you said, most, um, most vines are done on what's called VSP, which is vertical shoot positioning. Um, this actually, uh, this system, it's, it's a lot more work, uh, but it's really awesome for quality in sites like this one, where we have a little, uh, little more vigor, uh, because it's a little higher rainfall and, and super deep soils. So it, it separates the vines uh, laterally, so you actually have two cordons instead of one. And um, 
and uh, uh, splits them into like a U shape so that sunlight can get into the middle as well as from the outsides. And it makes a really small berries and, and uh, really intense fruit. And so you said you do these with, is it the calves you said these are? Uh, yes, just for Cabernet on this site. Uh, all the Merlot and my Petit Verdot is done with traditional VSB. So, so what were you saying about, um, give me that fun fact that you were Oh, you, apparently, so about. little known fact, the, um, they discovered a few years ago um, with you know DNA sequencing that Cabernet Sauvignon is, its parents are Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Franc, so actually a white grape and a red grape that actually made a darker grape. <laughs> so yeah, most people think that you know grapevines come from grape seeds, they actually don't. They come from cuttings from the vines themselves. That way every single vine out here uh, within a given variety and clone is the same. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so they're, that's done in the winter time um, nursed for a full year, so there's, there's a lot that goes into making a vineyard before it's even planted. There's a full on nursery part of it that's a couple year process as well. So we are now on the property of Leonetti Cellar. And we're gonna do a walking tour for people that maybe wanna come and get a tour. Is that available to the public right now? Uh, it's not, unfortunately. So this is about <laughs> as close as they get. Uh, we just do a one time a year deal for all our uh, main list customers. And first weekend in May where they come and pick up their wine, but uh, otherwise we're close to the close to the public. Stay focused on making wine. How many acres of the property? Uh, we've got about 82 here and about 30 acres in vine. Wow. Yeah. So where are we at right now? And I mean, this is just kind of a gorgeous picture. Yeah, it's view. just uh, it's our crush pad. Actually, it's a you know our courtyard, and then um, behind us here is our crush pad where we do all our processing. Um, we already did a press load this morning of some Merlot, and um, we'll be crushing grapes tomorrow. And do you guys just some, sometimes sit out here and maybe have lunch or some wine? Yeah, this is ab beautiful. Absolutely, but it's you know, it's. It's not what we do every day. <laughs> Everyone, I think, has this. It's like it's what I'd like to yeah. think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Horseback rides to the vineyard right. and tasting on the patio. Yeah, there's a lot of work involved. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Sit out here and have lunch once in a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the building behind us is actually where Leonetti started. Um, my parent, it was a tax shed when my parents bought an acre and a half here that they couldn't afford. and and uh, converted it to a winery. And so this was our first little fermentation room. And, and uh, how many acres the whole thing did they started. start off with? Just an acre and a half. Wow. And, and then, um, so the, the vines behind us here, the oldest in the valley, uh, we dad planted those in 1976, uh, along with some vines out at the original Leonetti homestead. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, the winery's been here from, from the beginning and still is, and we've just kind of added on. What were the buildings. original grapes that they planted here? Uh, Merlot and uh, and then Cabernet at the at the old Leonetti homestead. Okay. So yeah, we've been doing Cabernet Merlot from the beginning and still do. Awesome. Yeah. What's in this? So you guys now we brew compost tea in here for the vineyards. So it's still part of the process, but not part of the winemaking process. Just the, you know, it's part part of our farming. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So where do you want to go next? Um, so, uh, so this is uh, the original stone building that uh, my dad built, and um, a few neat things about it. Did um, he build it by hand, or uh, like a lot of it? Yeah, my my dad and my uncle and I collected every stone in this building. On Sundays, we'd we'd go up in the mountains, and uh, you know, my dad and uncle would drink a bottle of wine, and and uh, we'd pick up rocks up in the mountains on the you know Tiger Canyon Road on the switchbacks, and and uh, had this, you know, dad was for like a decade working on this wow. huge pile of rocks that uh, then would turn into, into this building. So like, you know, during high school, I'd, you know, after school, I'd come home and lo load scaffolding up for the stonemasons. And, and uh, yeah, so it's been a, it's been a neat, uh, neat process to see it, see it grow so slowly. What's this building mainly used for? Uh, now it's just, we use it for hospitality, for our tasting room. Uh, down below is our wine library in the cellar. That was uh, the original, um, uh, bell room, but um, now it's just offices and our uh, our tasting room. My mom still she's the green thumb. She does all the every pot. She does every wow. year. She plants How all over all over kind of, Is she the only one that takes care of plants around um, here? She's, it's not the only one that takes care of them. She's the one who plants them every yeah, okay. spring. She's like I'm the. It's kind of her <laughs> thing, you know. 
Um, so uh, this room that we're in now is our tasting room. So believe it or not, like on our spring release weekend, we have like 1,500 people through here. Wow. Yeah, it's a really, really busy weekend. But um, uh, before we built the new production facility in 2000, we had, um, we had several tanks in here and about 100 barrels um, stacked high. So um, it's always been used as a, as a winery in one form or another, but now it's just for hospitality, and tasting, and uh, wine writers and sommeliers, stuff like that. Hmm. Those are my great-grandparents over there on the wall. The lead ladies. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, this is my, uh, my great grandparents came from Calabria, Italy, a little town called Serapodacci, which I now have a vineyard named after that, but uh, that's the hometown. My dad uh, has been there. I have not yet. And uh, those are my great great grandparents, Frank and Rose Leonetti. Me, when I was much younger. Aw, that's <laughs> cute. Okay, so now we are in the production. We're in our main production space, so um, which we're obviously busy right now being harvest, so we're bringing grapes in um, next week. will be almost daily. And uh, so all these tanks will be getting full, fermentation started, and it's, uh, it's crushed, so it's our busiest time of the year. What do you guys, um, what are the main grapes that you have at Leonetti? Um, Cabernet and Merlot. Cabernet is our number one, um, followed by Merlot, and then we do some uh, Sangiovese as well, and uh, kind of a new Italian variety for us called Alianico. Uh, which I'm pretty excited about. Okay, and I, this is just a funny question because um, Jordan Small also said Merlot. Is there a, is there a true way to say it? Merlot. Merlot, but I, I know, but yeah, wait, when you I go always, to, Merlot. No, 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 it's Americanized. When you go to France, <laughs> is it's, it? Oh, it's it really is. Merlot, yeah. Merlot. Yeah. So I yeah. asked her, and she's like, "Oh, I'm not sure, but no, okay. Yeah. That is the true pronunciation. Merlot. Learn something yeah, new. Yeah, just think, just think when you're in there. Mer. Yeah, Mer. Don't we'll forget it. Okay. <laughs> Let's um, let's go down the cellar. Okay. We're down in the wine cellar, and I must say, coming down the stairs and just seeing, you have the glass um, frames on the outside. Mm. It's just beautiful down here. Yeah, it's kind of a little temple to wine, isn't it? it it's it's uh, what it reminds me of. Yeah, it's a neat place because it's always just you know quiet and uh, solitude down here, and it's where the where the wines age. So um, right now these barrels are in, they're all, all brand new, uh, just arrived from France. And um, they'll be getting filled with new vintage as the, as the uh, 16s progress. How old is this building? And uh, we built this in 2000. So uh, it's our 17th vintage in it. And um, it's been a, you know, being below ground, it just has so many advantages for a cellar. It's, it's humid, uh, the temperature is very stable, and uh, it's a great place uh, when it's 102 in the summer to come down here and check on my wines. <laughs> <laughs> What's the significance of the, the arches that you have down here? Um, it's a very strong form, so um, the cellar also supports the, the production facility above it. Mm -hmm. So um, one, it's beautiful, you know, form and function, and you know, when it's done right, it's beautiful and structural, and so um, it, you know, carries that load from up above, that's why. Do you ever come just down here and have a glass of wine and sit in the wine cellar? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't totally deprive myself. Yeah. <laughs> So this is something different that mm -hmm. many folks don't get to see um, how wine is aged. Right. Yeah, so these are a little different than your typical 60-gallon uh, barrels. Uh, it's a 30 hectoliter, about 13 barrels. I'm um, called Bati, which is what they're called in Italy. And um, it uh, just builds complexity in the wine. We use this for various lots. And having that, that uh, different surface area to volume ratio, the wine evolves differently. Mm -hmm. uh, you get this beautiful aromatic preservation is in these. The, the trade-off is you don't get the same tannin evolution on the palate, but um, it all ends up back together in the blend and builds complexity in the finished wine. How long in, a, in this? Um, about two years before it gets, um, you know, all the barrels get emptied in these and get final blended and then bottled. And then this is unique as well. Yeah, these are very cool. Um, so these are, uh, they're clay amphora. Um, and it's really the, it's the oldest, um, you know, vessel used for, for wine. You know, the oldest evidence of wine they've ever found, which I think now is like 7,000 years old, and was, was also in clay. And um, uh, same idea as an oak barrel, like the, the it's, it's porous, so the wine can breathe through it. Uh -huh. But uh, it's uh, full of Alianico, which is a new variety for us, an Italian variety, uh, which is the oldest documented wine variety in the world. Interesting. Um, so yeah, pretty neat. It's just, so this is about as kind of a, a heritage product uh, as you can get and a really fun, fun experiment to be playing with. Oh, yeah. this is cool. I want what, would, uh, what would the label say? Like, would, would you be able to... We call it Alianico, okay. which is, yeah, the, the, the variety. 
Would the the bottle though say how it was aged? Whether you know? Oh, these probably are... not. But you know, because we don't do like a back label. But I mean, we'd certainly on our website and otherwise, you know, educate the consumer about yeah about how we made it, and uh, we like to be pretty transparent about that, and and uh, make the you know customer feel like they're part of the process. Very cool. Yeah. So to see how the wine industry has evolved here in Walla Walla, how does that feel for you guys knowing that you were the first ones here? Oh, it feels great. I mean, I think it's probably particularly satisfying for my folks just, uh, you know, kind of having this dream to make a little wine and now it's, you know, the single biggest driver of our economy and all these new restaurants opening and, you know, just, um, tourists coming to town, uh, you know, by, by droves and, uh, it's really great, and, and in some ways it saved our town. We, you know, we were losing our um, our canneries and a lot of our vertically integrated agriculture had gone to other places, particularly South America. And so to have the wine industry here um, is just uh, it has saved uh, has saved our little town that we love so much. Thanks for joining us on our visit to Leonetti Cellar. Please join us next time as we visit another Washington winery. Okay, roll in, Mark. <laughs> Is that a yeah. good clap? Yeah. But... yeah. Okay. What okay. more did he say? Is that what those boards are for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Still rolling. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Action. Action. It <laughs> gets me laughing. <laughs> Rolling. I can't clap right. One more. There you go. Good? Nope. Good? You gotta work on that. I know. <laughs> it's like this. Go to work. Yeah. You want to do it? I'm better at it. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> good? That's better. <laughs> That's good. That's your best one today. Okay. Do I need to clap again? Oh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it was better in the cellar. It actually sounded better. Yeah, I had a little echo there. I know. Good? Counts down if we okay. get close. Okay. Rolling on A. Yep. <laughs> nope. Nope. There you go. <laughs> Third time's charm. <laughs> you got three of them. You need the same time. There you go. Yeah. Okay. We're rolling. <laughs>